Hello everyone, this is KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts and a video here on something I've had for a couple weeks to follow up on some recent videos I did about other digital modes on HF. Yes, we have FT8, we have FT4, we have PSK31, but there's a lot of other ones and this is something Gigaparts had sent me right about the time I was doing those videos and they said, hey, we just got this in. You want to check it out? Sure, okay. This is by Rig Expert. If we're not familiar with Rig Expert, I've done videos in the past. Maybe you've seen those on the Rig Expert analyzers and, and some other stuff based out of Ukraine. They do a pretty good job. They've got some pretty good uh, stuff out there. This is the Rig Expert TI 3000. Now, this is a USB transceiver interface for all different types of radios with custom cables that they make to operate phone mode, digital mode, and CW mode through your computer with a single USB port. And in the time of my ICOM 7300 and 9700, I have a USB interface or USB sound card built into the radio, right? But let's say you don't. Let's say you have an older radio that requires a, a rig blast or a sound card interface to operate those digital modes. Well, here's another option right here. The Rig Expert TI-3000, I'll show you about it and the cables that they have that are specific for different types of radios right now. Thank you to Gigaparts for sending this for me to play with. This is Ham Radio Concepts. Okay, so the Rig Expert TI-3000 comes with a shielded USB cable. The cables to interface your radio are additional because there's so many different types of radios and interfaces. Uh, and you can make your own. Rig Expert even has the schematics and pinouts online to make your own to a DB25 connector here. Now, I'm probably gonna say the way this looks, I'd rather buy one. Looks like a lot better than what I would do. Uh, but when Gigapart said they'd send it to me, I said, well, let me get the cable for the 7300 just because I don't have a radio on my desk right now that doesn't have a USB interface built in, but I want to be able to plug it in and use it. So this cable, for instance, will do the 703, 706, 718, 7000, 7200, 7300, 7410, and 9100. And they have them for Kenwood and Yesu and all different radios. So the Rig Expert <coughs> TI-3000 here, uh, it's got, you know, it's basically, here's your USB port here, connected to the computer, USB powered, no external power source required, and they say, uh, max a 100 milliamp current drain on this, so not really a power hog. Maybe good for field day or portable, who knows. Uh, transceiver, you know, connection right here. This is what interfaces your, of course, your radio to the box. And I'm looking here, looks like, yeah, the screws here are loose, so the case on the top is a little, look, see? That's okay, I'll tighten, I don't have a screwdriver to tighten those up. Uh, anyways, so on the front you have your main, um, main receiver volume here, your sub receiver volume, and your output, and this is output to the radio. So, uh, power on, indicator, CW when you're in CW mode, PTT when it's activated the transmit on the radio, and CAT, your computer-aided transceiver, it's your CAT communication link between your radio and your computer. So, not much to see here, but to explain it better, if you had an older FT450 ASU, and you wanted to use Ham Radio Deluxe or FT8 WSJTX software, you know, you want to get the, the audio levels right, okay, between the radio and the computer software. And you can do that by adjusting the audio here so that your radio ALC is at a good range and um, the program can decode. Because a lot of times when you're connected to the back of the radio, you're not using your volume anymore. Uh, it's, it's a set level from the radio uh, to the you know computer software and uh, sometimes you can go into menu like this and adjust the USB AF level but on the older radios or radios that don't have that you can't now with that being said on the bottom of course right here download all the manuals and software from rig expert and uh, with that being said if you can't get it matched with the settings or levels on the front there are jumpers here for additional for the main the sub and the output to uh, pad the uh, you know, audio levels in case you really need to dial in that range that you can't do with your radio or transceiver or interface. Maybe you're using this, you know, with an SDR uh, for receive and then a radio for transmit. And, you know, uh, there's a lot of different things you could do with this. But the fact that you can 
have another option here other than a signal link or a you know uh, different types of you know MFJ sound card interface. Here's another one right here. So I'm gonna plug it in real quick and see uh, just what it does and what it looks like. So this cable here, you have the keyer cable. This is for your keyer jack. If you wanted to use this with software to use uh, CW mode, it'll send it to the keyer through this on the back of the radio. Then you have your CIV, 3.5 millimeters. So this is what's doing the cat control, CIV, uh, in this situation. And this cable is going to look different depending on what radio you have. And then you have your 13-pin accessory port for the ICOM series radios. Yesu uses the 6-pin mini DIN and some other types, 8-pin, uh, whatever. So the 7300 and a lot of the other ICOM radios would come with this 13-pin accessory with bare ends on it, so you could wire your own interface. So I have one still in my 7300 box, uh, and this is the DB25. So if you were inclined to build your own cable, you could do that. These look pretty solid with the little spring relief on the back of the connectors here. And uh, let's go ahead and plug this in real quick. Okay, let's see if that found the driver. It sounded like... Uh, Okay, and it looks to be, oh, I guess it already found the driver. There it is, device is ready, rig expert is set up and ready to go. Okay, that was easy. So looking at the WSJTX software, with the FT8 just pouring in here on 20 meters right now, the uh, only thing I really had to set up for this, and you can see if I change bands, watch the screen here, if I change bands to, you know, see, uh, you know, it's, it's connected to the computer via the cat interface now the only you can see here the audio level on the left look i can adjust that right on the front without having to open up my sound card here or adjust with the icon in the settings you just turn the audio up like this so it's at a decent level there and the same thing from the software to the computer or to the radio i could watch the alc as it's transmitting and get it dialed in perfectly right here on the front panel of this rig expert so the only thing i really had to do is if i went into file settings you can see here audio, the input and output to the sound card is the Rig Expert 3000 here. In the radio, I have the 7300 uh, cat method, COM7, which is the COM port assigned on my computer for the Rig Expert, and uh, data packet mode. And when I hit test cat, it comes up green, and that's it. It's uh, connected to my radio. The rest of it is pretty seamless. No, uh, no third party software to have to run to connect. So if you have an older radio, like a FT450 ASU, off the top of my head, I used to have one. I um, basically would just be connected to the DIN port in the back, uh, probably the 9-pin DB9 for the cat control in the back of the radio, and the rest is handled through the Rig Expert. Now, if I go to Digital Master, this is, uh, let me close this one. Digital Master is normally uh, what I use for my digital modes. Now, I always have to link it with Ham Radio Deluxe in order to you know, get Digital Master to talk on my radio. And there's other ways of doing it, but if you go up here in the tools and, and look at the waterfall here, see with the audio level, so I could turn that up more, you know, I could turn it all the way down so that I'm not overdriving the waterfall. And the same thing to the radio from the computer. I always want to adjust your ALC to be just over the, the beginning of the ALC. You don't want that thing pegged out because it just distorts. So we're going down here to PSK frequency. And, uh, You'll see here, I got some PSK uh, right here coming in. So, there it is. So now, if, just the setup I did here, if I go to Program Options, you can see here the sound card is the Rig Expert input and output. If I go to PTT, normally I have it set up here with Ham Radio Deluxe to connect, you know, to configure or control DM780. But instead, I'm using serial port COM7, which is what my computer assigned for the Rig Expert sound card interface. And that's it. It's going to use COM7 for PTT, depending on if you have to set your data terminal ready and request to send, you know, for, uh, I'm guessing like an older radio, like a FT450 AC, for instance, I used to have one for years. Still do. It's just burned up. The, uh, probably the DB9 connector in the back and the six pin DIN for audio. And you're going to basically use the COM port of the rig expert to let it handle all the connections. But once you get that set up, you know, you can pretty much call CQ like that. And it 
starts keying a radio, and away you go. Well, I mean, there's not much more to say about this. It, it works. Um, I like the fact that it handles all the, you know, connections to the software uh, very simply. And, you know, there's a lot of other options you can use. There's a lot of other things that people use to integrate with their radio and, and the computer and stuff. This is just another one. Um, the, I mean, there's, there's, you know, it's affordable, just like a lot of the other models. And the cables and the fact that you can, you know, uh, make your own cable or buy pre-made cables that are actually look like pretty good quality uh, is, you know, a great option for those in ham radio who may not have something like a 7300, but something that's a little older, maybe a homemade radio interface, and you want to connect that old, you know, tube rig somehow to, you know, that's got some sort of <laughs> interface in the back. Maybe you want to connect that to digital modes. This may help. Only thing I would say is that the screws I have to tighten, they're just loose on the side, so the case is a little loose, but no big deal. Um, could have been worse. Thing could have been falling apart. Anyways, thanks for Gigaparts for sending this to me, and um, I'll probably be, you know, maybe during field day, uh, when I take out, you know, I'll probably make a interface for this to my Zygu X5105 um, or my G90 to do some QRP digital modes, or when I finally decide to get the ICOM 705 when it comes out and I pull that trigger, I'm sure there'll be a cable or a way to connect that to this uh, and do all the digital modes, you know, with it. Who knows? 73, everybody. Thanks for watching. Check out Gigaparts for this and the links in the description. They got the cables. Rig Expert has the manuals online. And 73, this is KJ4YZI.